friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library, where I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. Today we're going to talk about my least favorites, most disappointing, all of my DNFs and unhauls from 2023. Somehow I managed to have exactly 10 books that rated between a two and a two and a half stars out of five. And some of them were just really bad books. Some of them were books that were very disappointing and some were very disappointing and bad books. We're going to talk about those first, then we'll go through all of the DNFs and unhauls and I'll put some 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 chapters down here at the bottom for you so that you can you know if you just want to know the dnfs and unhauls you can go check that out if you want to know some tea about some books let's hang out for future reference i have not went through any of these to see who the publisher is and if it's a publisher that we're not doing marketing for currently but as i'm trashing these books i feel like that's okay also as always if it's a book that you like that's fine i didn't like it i'm allowed to not like the books that you like okay okay first the only book that I actually own a physical copy of still, and that is In Charm's Way by Lana Harper. Why do I own a copy of this? Because it's the fourth book in a series that I love. I didn't like this book. I gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. I read this in December. If you want to know like all of my full ranty thoughts about this book, I'll link December's uh, wrap up down below. Uh, but uh, let's just give you the basics, okay? This is supposed to be a romance. I don't like the love interest. I think they're an absolute piece, garbage piece of shit. And I think that they should have died and made the world a better place for me and for you. I'm also not real sold on the main character who is supposed to be the hero. Don't know that I like her either. She's stupid. Okay. Um, like, it's so hard to like a romance when you hate the main couple. I hated the love interest so much that their sex scenes made me feel skeezy. It's not like this is a dark romance. Like it's not supposed to feel that way. It's not supposed to be like, oh, like give you a little bit of the creeps. No, this is supposed to be cute and sweet and enjoyable. And I felt gross because I didn't like the, the romance, the romantic partner. I didn't like them. They were horrible. And then the main character was like selling her out all of the secrets of everybody in town, telling this person everything. Like you met this bitch two weeks ago, but you're telling her everything about every secret about everybody in town. And like, duh, why? Why would you do that? You don't do that. Especially when you come from a magical society that's supposed to be keep, kept a secret so that people don't die. It was a time, it was a time, it was a, it was a time. I will be keeping this book for now, because I have a really hard time separating series. But honestly, <laughs> whew, when shelf space starts to get limited, she'll be the first to go. I lied, I have more of these on my shelves also because they're parts of series, fuck. Also a 2.5 out of five stars, it's actually two books. It is Terror Behind the Mask and Home Sweet Haunt, which are by PJ Knight. They are part of the Creepover series. They were just not good, you know? I, I plan to keep the series together. There's like 21, 22 of them. They're, I'm pointing because they're up here. You can't see them, but they're right there. Why can't you see them? They're right there. You don't have x-ray vision. You can't see off the screen. Okay. Anywho. Yeah. I just, they were not good. They were not scary. I didn't like them. I don't know who wrote those ones. If you haven't been here before, the I say that they're by PJ Knight, but they're actually um, written by a bunch of different authors for Simon Spotlight. So like each one is written by a different person. I don't know who they're actually written by, but I didn't like those two. They're mid-grade, they're short, they're supposed to be creepy. They were just dumb. Speaking of being dumb, let me grab it because I do own it. We're all dumb. Exiles, Jane Harper, also a 2.5 out of 5 stars. So this is the third book in a series. This is the Aaron Falk series. Aaron is a forensic detective with the police in Australia and somehow in every book he's like the only person who's smart enough to solve murders even though he's not a murder detective. So the first two books made sense. There was like plot points that were happening, things made sense, like you were able to kind of put things together at the end and even if you weren't able to put it together at the end when you got to the end you were like oh all of that makes sense. This book 
it was a cold case somehow Aaron was the only like he is not even from here you don't even go here he's not from this place every time you get one of these books all of the characters are different which has not been my favorite but I still like Aaron Falk's character so I was in for it plus I like the way that Jane Harper writes her scenery her setting is like a whole character in the book and I like that about it but this book in particular I felt like there was just this thing throughout the whole book that no one knew the information of except for Aaron Falk. He was the only one who had the knowledge and the ability to solve this murder and the information was never given to, given to us as the reader. So when we got to the answer, it was like, where did you get that from? I, I never, never heard any of that. Oh, you, you made it up. Okay, cool, cool, cool. It was awful. And also the second half of this was a romance. I don't fucking know what happened, but it got weird, man. Also at a 2.5 out of 5 stars, Haru, Zombie Dog Hero by Ellen O. This one was excruciatingly disappointing for me because I have loved Ellen O's books in the past. I really loved the Spirit Hunters trilogy. I love her mid grade and the way that she sets things up and her characters and the world building that she did in the, the Spirit Hunters trilogy. But for some reason, Haru felt like a first draft that still needed some edits, not even a first draft. It felt like a third or fourth draft. It just needed some more work. It needed more backstory. It needed more world building and it needed a more defined ending because it was just a really weird way to end a book. Like it just didn't, there was no ending. And I don't know if this is expected to be a series or if this was a standalone, I'm really not sure, but either way, that's not how you end a kid's book in my opinion. So there's a part in this book where Haru is a dog and uh, he is protecting his human boy from this racist piece of shit lady. This racist piece of shit lady smacks this boy because, I don't know, he says something that she didn't like. So he, she hits him in the face and she calls the police because Haru bites her. And so the police show up and rather than being like, oh my God, this lady hit a child who's like nine, they go, oh, well, Haru's going to have to go to the dog pound and probably be put down because he bit somebody. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Not cool. But we're not going to address the fact that this grown ass adult human woman smacked a child across the face. Never addressed. The police are like, yeah, whatever. And like, I know that like this can happen in the real world, but like it wasn't even addressed as part of the story of like, if it was addressed as looking at it from the perspective, cause we are in like the, the child's perspective. If they had even mentioned, you know, that they were surprised that the police hadn't done anything or they were confused as to why the police hadn't done anything, that would make sense to me. But it wasn't addressed that there was an issue with the police not addressing anything. That was the big one for me. It was just like the, this bitch just smacked the shit out of a kid and we're just supposed to be cool with that. Uh, next book, 2.25 out of five stars, The Hollow Boy by Jonathan Stroud. I think this is book three in the Lockwood & Co series. Might've been four, I think it was three. Whichever one we get the new girl in and Lucy becomes an absolute bitch whichever one that is. Yeah, the guys, so Lockwood and Company is like Lucy and then Anthony Lockwood and then I can hear her voice saying his name, but I can't think of his name right now. Anyway, it's those three characters and I think around book three, they hire in someone else to work with them as well. They are hunting spirits and they like destroy the ghosts because that's what happens in their world. The kids are the ones who can see the ghosts and they take them out. And so they hire this other young girl to help them get rid of the ghosts. And for some reason, Lucy feels so threatened by this girl that she is horrible to her throughout the entire book. Lucy's our main character. She's the character that we're, she's our point of view character. We are in her brain. She treats this girl like shit for absolutely no reason. And it changes her entire personality from the previous books. It makes no sense. Like she was just like a totally normal, 
I mean, I mean, totally normal-ish girl, but she goes from like zero to 5,000 on like the bitch meter and I couldn't stand it. It made me crazy. Why? Why did we choose to do that? Oh, because this series was written by a man. That's why. Two girls can't exist in the same place at the same time without a fucking cat fight. That's why. Okay. Did I continue reading the series? Yes, I did finish out the series. Did it get better? Questionable. It, it, uh, it was a time. Haunting of Hill House, Shirley Jackson. Read this as part of the Offtube Chat Book Club. I don't remember why I didn't like it, but I didn't like it. Obviously, because I gave it a 2.25 out of 5 stars. If I liked it, I would have rated it higher. It wasn't really as scary as I was expecting. The ending was kind of just like, it was just there. I understand why this is considered there was a dog hair floating in the air and I was trying to catch it while I was talking. I understand why this is considered creepy, especially for its time. I understand why it is like a horror classic. I grasp the concept. I just didn't really vibe with the writing style. I didn't vibe with like what was happening. Now, when we talk about the series, 25 out of five stars. But as for the book itself, not really my jam. Also not my jam, welcome to Dead House. R.L. Stein, one of the Goosebumps books. I thought it was the first Goosebumps book, but it might actually be the 10th Goosebumps book. I'm not really sure. I don't know, but it was bad. It was two kids that move into a house, and as the story goes on, they find out that every kid in their town at one point has lived in their house. They also find out that all of those kids are dead. That's weird. No one was like, as you were meeting these 30 kids, they all lived in our town house at once. How the fuck do they all live in your house? Like all 30 of them. You're all 10. Do the maths, my dude. But mostly the problem with this book for me was our main character and her brother were absolute snotty little assholes the whole time. This is where I have said like, I understand the concept that this was written for children. It was not written for 36 year old me. I get it. It was written for children. However, I read mid-grade all the time that I love, that has great characters, that has great character work. The characters are enjoyable, likable. Even when they're not likable, they have something going for them that you're like, okay, they're just a little bit of an asshole. These kids were so bad. I wanted, I was just waiting and hoping for the the villains to kill these kids so I didn't have to read them anymore on the page because they were so bad. I didn't like it. It wasn't a fun time for me, Carl. Okay, two stars. We're gonna go to Hotel Magnifique. I don't remember who it was by. I don't remember why I didn't like it. I gave it two stars. Obviously I thought very highly of it. I think this is one that I skim read, clearly, because I don't remember what happened. I don't I have no clue. Also two stars, Blubber by Judy Bloom. I read this for maybe for 31 books in October, maybe for The Amazing Readathon. I don't remember, but it's a book that I read and hated. Uh, Blubber is a classic in children's fiction. I just realized that a lot of these books on my list are mid-grade. Blubber, Welcome to Dead House, Haru, the two Creepover series. So half, half of my list is mid-grade, noted. Blubber is about a girl whose name is not Blubber. Uh, it's about this other girl who's an asshole. And she goes to school every day and she's like friends with the popular girls and her and the popular girls pick on Blubber. I can't remember Blubber's real name and I would refer to her to that if I could remember it um, because that should be her name. What is mean to her? Like to the point that like at one point they even force feed her food to the point that she throws up. They pull up her skirt at school and show the boys her underwear and they are horrible to her. And the main character thinks it's funny. She's awful to this person. And at no point in the book does she ever grow as a character. At some point, the I don't care about spoiling any of these. I don't know if you've noticed. At some point, Blubber and the mean girls, the popular girls, then start to pick on the main character. And they start doing the same things to her that they had done to Blubber. And rather than, like, let them beat her down. She's like, well, I'm better than Blubber. I'm not going to take it. I'm stronger than her. I'm going to be better than her. 
and so she like I don't know ends the feud somehow it's so dumb she never learns anything. She still thinks she's better than everybody else. She still thinks that everything that they did to Blubber was okay. I don't understand how this is a like award-winning children's novel. I don't get it. There is nothing in that book to me that says that children should be reading that book. Nothing. And the last book that we're gonna talk about, there is a whole video for much like The Haunting of Hill House, which I'll link down below because it was an off the tube chat book club pick and that is Jaws. And oh my God, gross. Uh, Jaws the movie, great, fantastic, loved it, great movie. If you don't know last year for off the tube chat, the reason why I'm saying like the adaptations were good, last year's theme for off the tube chat book club was books that had been adapted into movies or TV series. The movie for Jaws was great. The book Jaws was an atrocity to humans like the suspense was good and like the this giant shark is gonna eat us part was good but I think some of those people deserve to be eaten by the shark some of them were awful um, the book was very racist was very sexist gross in a lot of cases the main character his wife is like stepping out on him with a guy that's younger than her who she used to date his brother when they were kids and they're sitting at this restaurant he's like tell me about you know what you used to fantasize about when you were a kid and she says well you know like all young girls i used to dream of growing up to be a prostitute and i'm like you did what now and i have taken a poll and the number of women that i know and the Venn diagram of those of whom wanted to grow up to be a prostitute do not overlap. There is no overlapping section of girls that I know wanting to grow up to be a prostitute. So I don't know who the fuck this bitch was and what her and those people were thinking about when they were kids, but I cannot relate. And then he's like, well, what do you think about now? And she says, well, I have the same sexual fantasy that all girls have. I fantasize about being sexually assaulted, except she says a different word. And the first words out of his mouth are, well, tell me about it. What does he do to you? What does he look like? Is he black? What? Who? First off, only a man would write this. Second off, why? third off why are we still why why are we still recommending this to people i feel bad because i recommended this book to people i made this a book club book for my own book club and forced it upon people and then read it and then went what the fuck did i do i it was bad it was real bad again if you want to know like full thoughts that kate and i both had I'll link the uh, off tube chat discussion down below, but I think you got everything you needed to get from that one conversation. We can then talk about DNFs and unhauls. Um, I could put pictures on the screen, but I haven't probably haven't done that yet. So I'm not going to start now. I DNF'd Hex by Thomas Olt Hivolt. Olde Hivolte. I don't know what his name is. Anywho. I started that book. It was boring. City of Dusk, Patera Sim, DNF'd. A Cosmic Kind of Love, Samantha Young, DNF'd. Because it is one of those romances where the man knows things that the woman doesn't know. She doesn't know that she's talking to him. She thinks she's like writing it like a personal little diary. And he's reading everything she's writing. And I'm not here for that. I DNF'd Ruined by Amy Tintera, which then means I unhauled the sequels to that book. Allied and Avenged, because why would I read books two and three if I DNF book one? I DNF'd The Writing Retreat by Julia Bartz, because oh, wow, that was a book. Uh, it was a choice. It was my most anticipated read for 2023, and I DNF'd it so fast. I know a lot of people did really enjoy that one though, so you know, whatever. I Unhauled the Darkest Minds by Alexander Bracken, um, which technically I did DNF because I did it for a tri chapter, but moving on. Song of Silver Flame Like Night was an unhaul. The Red Scholar's Wake was an unhaul. Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston was an unhaul. However, I did read the first couple of chapters of that and didn't like the writing style, but I loved the movie. Uh, the Darkest Legacy by Alexander Bracken, also unhauled, because why would I read the fourth book if I hadn't read the first three? Ash Princess by Laura Sebastian. 
DNF'd, which means I unhauled Lady Smoke, which was the second book in that series. Um, I DNF'd On Writing and Writers by C.S. Lewis. It was not, it was like a collection of things he had said over the years about writing. It was not well put together, let's put it that way. Her Majesty's Royal Coven, DNF'd that fairly like towards the middle was not having a good time. Uh, Never Ever Getting Back Together by Sylvie Gonzalez, I DNF'd because I can't get behind 19 year olds and the second chance romance. I think like he was the love of her life when she was 16. What you gonna do, DNF'd. Tithe by Holly Black, DNF'd. I counted 60 mentions of smoking or drinking in the first two chapters. Plus somebody got shivved and it was never addressed. Her mother got shivved in the stomach. The police came and picked her up and uh, took them home to pick up all their things and sent them off on their merry way. No one ever discussed the man who was her husband who had shivved her. We just didn't talk about that. So I unhauled Valley and Ironside, obviously. Uh, Scout's Honor by Lily Anderson. Have loved Lily Anderson in the past. That book was not it. Uh, Mercedes Lackey, The Black Swan. The love interest um, sexually assaulted people, to put it lightly. Uh, there's no coming back from that. FYI, in case you're wondering, Jade Fire Gold by June Seattle's Tan was a DNF. Um, just didn't get into it. Halloween Party by Agatha Christie was a DNF. Uh, the Sound of Stars by Alicia Dow, DNF'd. Enjoyed the writing from the main character, but the love interest, because he's an alien, his wording and everything just really hurt my brain and I couldn't focus on the story. Um, Bitter Orange Tree, can't remember who that was by. That was a book club book that I DNF'd. Wild Seed by Octavia Butler was a book club book that I DNF'd. On the Savage Side by Tiffany McDaniel I DNF'd. That was dark as fuck. Uh, the Bone Witch by Renchu Pecco I DNF'd. Forest Fall by Lyndall Clipstone I DNF'd because there was a love triangle with the villain. Ooh, I can't get behind that. Uh, just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister I DNF'd. That one was the one that I read the first 20% three times and still had no clue what was happening. Um, Shed No Tears by Kaz Freer I unhauled because I decided um, that I wasn't going to continue on with that series. Uh, DNF'd Witchful Thinking. DNF'd My Roommate is a Vampire. DNF'd The Young Elites by Marie Lu. Therefore, I unhauled The Rose Society and The Midnight Star. I DNF'd Traitor to the Throne by Alan Hamilton, which means I unhauled Traitor to the Throne, Rebel of the Sands, Traitor to the Throne. I don't know if I said both of those, but now I have. Nothing wrong with either of those, the Marie Lou or the Alan Hamilton, just not really what I'm into anymore. They were fine for YA fantasy, but it's not really my jam right now. So I went ahead and unhauled those so that someone else can enjoy them. Um, I also unhauled Foul Eulogies. It was a book club book that didn't read it before book club. And then everyone in book club was like, girl, get rid of it while you still can. And then I unhauled the Fallen Kingdom series because the first book included incest and I, I just, I'm, I'm done with incest books, okay? I've had my years with Cassie Clare and I'm not doing it anymore. All right, that was it. That was my least favorites, my DNFs, my unhauls, my spicy opinions. Uh, if you are still here, leave me a frowny face down below. That is all I have for today. I'll see you guys next time.